How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. It's Sunday at 6 p.m. It's me. I'm here. Listen, I started a little trouble <laughs> this week. Cause a little, cause a little ruckus. But man, I got to tell you, I have a ton to talk about uh, regarding Raw possibly moving to TV 14. Uh, how I was told this information, what I saw, uh, what other people saw. I, I, I'm actually, listen, here's the reality. If I saw that was reported somewhere, <laughs> I probably would be like, Hey, are they really going TV 14? But this is a, uh, this is a new development. This is a very interesting development here happening within USA network, within WWE, which we're going to talk about, obviously, cause this is the big story, uh, as of Friday, as of Thursday, Friday. Friday, Thursday, one of those. Uh, also, uh, more allegations possibly against Vince McMahon. There's uh, more investigations coming out. A lot of people within the wrestling business have been reached out. A lot of people within media have been reached out regarding this. People want people, you know, they want to be questioned. They want to ask some questions about previous incidents about Vince McMahon. So we're going to talk about that. Special guest referee added to SummerSlam. That entire card is changing. Jeff Jarrett has been added to that tag match. Ain't I great? They're in Nashville. Who better than uh, Double J to do that? G1 results, night one and two. And guys, guess what? Somebody's going to be calling in in a couple of minutes here. The one, the only, Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer is going to be joining me to kind of, you know, break down everything that's been going on with this Raw story. Which I think is a, it, I mean, it's it's an astronomical story if it is happening. Uh, the, the way that this kind of came out is even funnier. Uh, I, I and, and I'll tell you this before we head on over to the break. This is the first time. I mean, you know, listen, I, I get a lot of stuff that comes across. I get a lot of emails, like a lot of text messages. J I have never seen a memo. Get released and then get pulled back after two hours the way that it was done. We're going to be talking about that and a whole lot more. Also joined by Dave Meltzer. When we come back, Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here on a Sunday on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here, Sunday edition. Man, I am glad to be here today. I'm feeling the uh, the music, too, for you guys here today. Uh, a lot to talk about, obviously. With me, as I, as I told you guys, the one, the only, Mr. Dave Meltzer on the line with us. Hey, Dave. Hey, how are you, Andrew? I'm doing good. Uh, I, you know, I... I got in a little trouble on Friday, but I, I think it kind of worked itself out with this with this uh, story story about well, Pat, Raw, Pat McAfee saved you. Pat McAfee did save <laughs> me, and a couple other people tweeted and kind of saved me here. But I wanted to kind of run down the story with you because honestly, they you know I've been doing obviously I haven't been doing this long enough. Uh, unlike you, you know you've been covering wrestling for forty years or so. I. I 50. 50. Okay, you know what? I, I didn't want to date you. <laughs> but I got to say, well, you know. I started, I started very young. You did. And, and uh, listen, it influenced a lot of us here. Ton, uh, a ton of us covering professional wrestling. But for me, you know, I, I, I don't really do scoops. I don't like to kind of dig in. But sometimes when I know something is happening, it's pretty certain. And, you know, I see things and I'm told things. And obviously you get a lot of this information, too. Friday, I got wind that, or was it Thursday? Uh, Friday or Thursday? I can't remember. It was Thursday. It was Thursday, it was Thursday. yeah. It was Thursday. On Thursday, yeah. I got a message early in the morning saying, hey, have you heard anything about Raw going TV 14? I laughed at it. And I said, I, I don't, I'm like, yeah, sure. Okay, whatever. And two other people at USA reached out to me. Somebody within WWE reached out to me. And I was like, okay, something's brewing. And then somebody at Fox asked me also. Same, same question. Do you know anything happening about this? And I said, no, absolutely not. So I asked a couple people, and I was told there was a memo that went out. I saw this memo. I saw that they, they said that it's happening on July 18th, which I couldn't believe that soon. And within three yep. hours of me posting what I posted, a retraction went out internally within USA, and they got scolded at sharing information. So, But, but I mean, we know, it's, we know that it's something that's been discussed and it's something that's probably happening because uh number one i mean first of all obviously the memo tells you that that was the idea at that moment and that the only thing that they're trying to figure out is when to do it and how to explain it to the public and all that but once mcafee said it it's almost like um you know we're acknowledging that it's happening soon so it's happening what that means is the big question but 
it's clearly happening. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm really, I try to be careful with this stuff. And I, I sent Brian immediately when it was happening. I messaged Brian and I, and I messaged Garrett to to text you because I couldn't find your phone number. So I'm like, hey, Garrett, can you like send this to Dave? You know, and I don't know if he sent you what I sent him, but. I mean, for a memo to say, hey, just to let staff know, July 18th, we're going, you know, we're, yep. we're going to be TV yep, 14. Yep, yep. That's as solidified as possible. Uh, so I, I don't. Absolute, absolutely. I mean, I, I know I've seen like um, interrupts memos and everything, and sometimes they change a little bit. But generally speaking, in every case, the basic story always happens. So, you know, it's a question. Sometimes, and sometimes the date's moved. I mean, I've heard about like, can- you know, memos about cancellation of the show. And sometimes it moves. They move the cancellation back or up a month. But it always ends. I mean, I've never had someone tell me, "Hey, this show's being canceled, and it doesn't end up being canceled, so, yeah. so to speak." Yeah. Or this, where we're making making this move, and it always happens. So yeah, I mean, like as soon as you, as soon as I heard it was a memo at USA, it was like, okay, it's happening. Just a question of when. Yeah, I, I, it, it was very, very shocking to me that it got it got kind of messed up in, in within a couple hours. But here's the bigger question, right? It's not. I, to me, it's not a matter of them going TV 14. It's a matter of when and what that actually means. Like you said, I don't think this means that they're going to be, you know, blood. And, it, you know, actually, the rating is TV. They were going from PGV to TV 14 LV. So this, to me, means the language that they're going to be using is what's changing. more right. than anything I, else. I expect it. I expect I expect that there's certain things. Well, I mean, if you watched Raw on Monday, there was a word that was edited out that's that's uh, on all over. Dynamite probably said far too often, but it's there. And I think it's just what it is. It's just like, look, these other guys are using that word on their TV every single week, and no no sponsors are cracking down or anything like that, so why don't we? And it's like, okay, let, you know, I think that's really what it is. It's just a response to, hey, some, you know, our competitor is doing it, and they're not getting any flack, so we're not going to get any flack either. So or we don't expect to get any flack for it. And why not? Why not? You know, um, because, I mean, the thing on Monday's uh, show this past Monday is Brock Lesnar said the word that was bleeped out and it had been agreed to by everyone. Like, you know, the the WWE's interviews are scripted and USA sees the script. So everything was cool. And then it was still sound edited. So I think that I don't know that that is the thing that happened, but the timing of everything works out perfectly in the sense that they agreed to it. They got squeamish. Because probably because it says TV, you know, PG, and that word was being used. And it's like, uh, you know what? Like, let's just change it. And because, again, like like you said, I don't expect it to be a lot of blood. Although, you know, AEW obviously is doing blood, too. But I think they don't want to do blood. But, I mean, as far as the language, yeah, I think they want to get a little bit more, more risque on the language. I don't think it, it really makes any tangible difference in the product i mean you know i guess you can use the word and get a pop but you know it's it's still the same you know same guys and doesn't change the matches and doesn't change the angles very much but you know whatever you know they you know if that's if they want to do that i mean i don't, I don't have any issue with it i mean it's, it's and i don't think anyone i don't think anyone does at this stage i don't think so age. either no and i and you know they've toyed with this idea a number of times i mean a couple just a couple of years ago when they were doing raw underground they wanted that third hour to be a little bit more adult and really they didn't commit to it yes. fully uh that it tends to happen a lot over there where they 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 half commit the projects and then pull back i think we, we kind of know right. why that happens and who decides that but here, here's my question yep. right uh, you know the it, it to me, it's more of the optics of going TV fourteen, right? It's more competitive to a portion of the audience that maybe is a little bit disenfranchised with WWE and the way that things are presented on TV. I think to me, and and we saw, I, I did not think this would be, uh, maybe maybe I was a little bit naive. I didn't think this would get as much traction when I put the tweet out. I, I was like, okay, this is like any other story that I put out. A couple thousand likes on a big story, and that's it. But this had like eighteen thousand before I deleted it because I didn't want. At that time, I was when it went out. I, I was still trying to piece it together, and I didn't want the July 18th still going out there. So I took the tweet down and I put out a new one. And I said, "Hey, listen, this was the situation." Um, but to me, it's an optics thing more than anything else, and that has been a big WWE thing. Whenever I speak to people there, they always bring up the term optics. Like Cody, for example, they were they were dancing with joy when Cody went over because it was a great optics PR battle for them. So with this, absolutely, this absolutely. kind of puts them on the same scale as what AEW is doing. And it's not that they're going to do what AEW does or, you know, depending on what side you fall on. Maybe they don't even come close if you're very much an AEW fan. But the optics says different for them. 
I don't think they're gonna. There's yeah. gonna be a big difference. I, I, my personal opinion, I don't think a lot's gonna change. Maybe you'll get certain words uh, that are used by certain people, uh, and outside of that, that's it. I don't think we're gonna be getting. You know, we're not gonna get a a a death match, a bar wire death match on Raw ever. In my opinion, I don't, I don't think, think we're happen. gonna get. I don't. I don't think. I mean, they're already breaking tables every. You know, regularly. So that's you know, there's you know, there's that, and you're getting accidental blood all the time anyway. As far as like the on purpose blood, I don't see them doing that. Um, you know, they did it once with Lesnar and Randy Orton, and, and I think that was a big mistake in hindsight. Um, and yeah, so I, I don't expect, I don't know that they think the blood bat thing works for them anyway. Um, but we'll see. I mean, may, you know, it does give them a little bit more leeway. Um, you know, they kind of promise sponsors a tame product, but again, I don't see the sponsors you know, I don't see their sponsors getting upset over a dirty word in 2022. It's it's a different yeah. world. And they, they don't know, get those like, complaints. Uh, that's a rarity for them yeah, to get a no complaint. One's gonna, no, no one's no one's going to get a complaint. You know, things change all the time. I mean, I, I was thinking about the thing is a totally different subject. But for years, they wouldn't touch Matt Riddle. And now they're main eventing him. And it's not like they run away from why they wouldn't touch him, you know, and it's part of his character. And, you know, I mean, for, and, and, you know, that was like, the thing. we don't even want him in, in uh, dark matches and we don't even want him in, uh, you know, in tryout matches or yeah. anything. It was like, he was a, a, he was a definite no for years until, you know, New Japan wanted him. And then it was just, you know, Dave, um, we got to go to break. Yeah. We got to go to break, but stay tuned. We got a second segment coming up, guys. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Wrestling Observer Live, Ages Aaron here, Sunday edition. I got Dave Melcher, the Wrestling Observer. The the man behind Wrestling Observer on the line with us. We were, first segment we were talking about, second segment I should say, we were talking about the possibility of Raw going TV 14. And I got Dave on the line here to talk about it. Who better than him? But I kind of wanted to run down on the latest that I heard. The last of the, the updates, which was probably sometime on Friday after Pat McAfee mentioned on SmackDown that, you know, kind of alluded to the TV 14 story. Uh, so, so have a couple other... Uh, wrestlers on social media so the last that the last i got was that that memo was sent out internally to usa staff right that that far we know S from the time that the article went out the, my my tweet went out to them uh, i guess like a couple hours they decided that they were not going to do it on monday actually th first they said in the message they were not doing it and then there was i spoke to a couple other people they said no 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 it's just not now we're not doing it this monday so, uh, you know, to me, it, it was explained that that memo went out prematurely. Uh, and that term was used by numerous people that I spoke to. So it seems like it was it was in a message somewhere uh, th that tweet went that message memo went out prematurely. And um, that was it. It should not have gone out at the time that it did. But the answer is that it is going TV 14. That's what USA Network's on board with this. They're ready to do it. Uh, there was a couple other people within WWE that mentioned that, you know, maybe this was it was alluded. I, and I didn't confirm. But now, Dave, you're you're here with me. Uh, did you hear anything? Because I was somebody mentioned to me that this was possibly a Kevin Dunn thing and that Kevin was tired of having to bleep certain words. That I don't know. I thought I, I actually from someone in WWE who thought it was a USA thing, but it also could be that they went to USA and, you, you know, USA has to approve it. Yeah, of course. So it could be that. You know, so it's 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 a WWE thing and a, and a USA thing both. I mean, honestly, because it's it, they both have to approve it. If one doesn't want it, it wasn't going to change. So they're both on. So basically, it's a situation where whoever went to whoever first, the other one said okay, and now it's the question of when we implement it. To kind of move on to another <laughs> bizarre, scandalous uh, situation. Uh, more allegations possibly against Vince McMahon. There's uh, more more interviews being conducted. The Wall Street Journal is also working on another story, another follow-up regarding this. Dave, you know, whenever I think about anything to do negatively press-wise with Vince McMahon, the infamous Phil Donahue episode with you on it comes up in my mind every time. I, I, I mean, as a kid, I had that recorded. I had my mother record that with John Arezzi and you and, and – 
he was I, I mean what a, what a bizarre I know you've spoken about it numerous times so very a very uncomfortable <laughs> positioning of you sitting next to da- uh, <laughs> Vince McMahon uh, on the on, that wasn't bad I mean ser- seriously me sitting next to Vince wasn't bad because of all the people on the panel I mean I'm sure I'm the one that he would wanted to sit next to and the re- the reasons were weird because they wanted Bruno there. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we all knew that that was a terrible idea. And I said, look, you know, I mean, it was, it was basically me going like, look, I mean, me next to Vince is the best thing for the show. I wasn't like looking for glory. It was just like, it's the best thing for the show. And uh, they all pretty much realized that that it was because basically Bruno was at the very end because they wanted as much distance between Vince and Bruno as possible because Bruno was very, very hot that day. Yeah. I, that would have been that would have been something that would have been perfect for daytime TV in the nineties. Oh my God, would that have been something? Yeah. Right in the middle, I, and I would have had to jump in the middle. That was the scary part of the whole thing. I wasn't scared about it. I didn't really expect it, but Bruno did go like he, yeah. go, he goes like it, it's just a funny thing because he go, Bruno goes if he lies, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then the producers of the show go, "Do you think he's going to lie?" And I go, "I think so." Yeah. And they go, "What do we do?" And I go, "Put me there." You know, I'm obviously not going to get mad if he lies or or anything, and it'll be just it'll be just fine. And if something happens, uh, you know, I guess I gotta I gotta dive in the middle or something. Or, you know, I mean, they have stay of security, but it, it 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 could. I didn't expect it to be bad. I suppose at, 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 in worst case scenario, it could have been bad, but you know, it wasn't. Um, but yeah, that would have been yeah, it would have been like uh, the Jerry Lawler Andy Kaufman thing. One like I honestly got it. I think it would have been. One of the craziest moments in the uh, television. Ca- that, you know, in, that conversation would be, if, if, would be if, still flowing online that Dave was in on the work. You know, well, it was a work and well, Dave was no, in No, no, yeah, but it's Bruno and Vince working, which, you know, yeah. believe me, Bruno and Vince weren't, weren't working then, no. Uh, Hello? Let me see. Yeah, sorry, I lost you for a second there. So I want to I want to get your opinion on this. So do you, you know, more investigations being done right now that they're, they're, they're hoping to conclude this uh, soon? Obviously, the investigation, WWE has said that whatever the investigation uh, brings forward, they're going to obviously, uh, you know, honor whatever the, the decision is and whatever. Uh, do you do you think this is going to get deeper at this point or, or have we seen the worst of the situations? You know, I don't know, but I think I think we've seen I think that the last article was the worst. We may find more. Um there may be some it's interesting because no women have come forward publicly that i'm aware of in the last you know since last friday when the last story broke and sometimes those things happen in, in this situation where more people jump on board and it really hasn't happened and but you know if there's if there is more stuff out there um you know we got a lot of people looking for it including the including them internally and it, it's it becomes the weirdest thing because it's like the last thing that the board of directors wants to do is, is have a fight with Vince and, you know, the facts may force it. The facts may not force it. And, you know, for us, it's just kind of sitting and waiting what happens. I mean, it's like I, in my mind think that in the end, you know, Vince is still going to be with the company, but I read the allegations. I go, if this stuff is true and they believe it's true, boy, how do you, how do you, how do you keep them? I don't think you can. So you can't, uh, it's, it's, (laughs) yeah, it's, it's 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 a really uh, you know it's one of the crazy stories like in the last thirty years honestly. Well, I mean you you've said it numerous times. If this was any other company in the position that they're in, any media company, any any corporate company that is you know oh he's gone. He you, it wouldn't even be it would it would be instantaneous, instantaneous. Yeah, he's gone. If it was especially when it's multiple, you know what I mean. Um, I know the argument. It's like he paid for his own money and everything like that. But the the one allegation. You know where you're talking about, you know, paying 7.5 million and the idea of coerced sex and, you know, firing when you stop doing it. I mean, yeah, they would be gone. You and and it's just it's it's, um, you know, I mean, basically, they're going to have to find out who this person is and talk to them, and that person's going to have to uh, say something different than the original thing that they got paid for. Um, so it is a very weird. It's a very weird, tenuous situation. Yes, very much so. Very much so. Um, you know, let, let's. Uh, I'm curious how this falls out. Honestly, I'm very curious because this is this is a make or break for for many things in that company. Oh, it's just, it's a total change of face. The company's going to do great either way. One of the things, like if it was 15 years ago or even five years ago, 
I think that there would be this thing of, oh, what happens with Vince is gone. But you know what? This company is so set financially yeah. that Vince can be gone and somebody else can be in charge of creative. And as long as they're competent and creative and they're not absolutely horrible, uh, everything would be cool. And, and you, you know, you, get, you could do conservative creative and, and it will work right now just because of the nature of the fan base and everything like that. You know, they're, the, 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 the characters themselves are, are more over than they've been in several years. There is an upswing in interest, even though people don't want to hear that. They're doing fine. Um, they're not. It's, it's never going to be the Attitude Era again. I mean, I just don't think that, you know, when people want to compare it to, to 23 years ago or 21 years ago, we're, you know, until we get another Rock and another Steve Austin, that's not going to happen. But where we are now, you know, I mean, it's it's better than it's been. I will say that. You know, it's it's the last. You know, the the advances. If you look at all these shows coming up, they're above what they had been. The TV ratings were up from a year ago. Not up a lot, but they're up. And you know, that's where we stand. Where do you, you know? Where do you think a healthy? You, after, uh, where do you think a healthy WWE, as far as like Raw goes or, or SmackDown goes, if if they're if they're in, in a very healthy position, where do you think those ratings should be? It's hard to do the metrics at this point, right? Because you know, consumption of, of media is so Look, different. If, 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 if you're if you're you know, nobody's immune from the realities of television. If you're number one, you're okay. It's just like AEW when people go, oh, they haven't grown viewers. You know, number one, cable has lost many many homes, and if you compare the viewers of AEW or WWE from this year and last year, and then you factor in the loss of homes the stations have, they are both up. So it's, and it's not like they're knocking them dead or they're up 30% or anything like that, but they're up. And, and to me, if you're up, you're doing good. If you're number one on your day on television, you're doing good. And dynamite's number one, most, most weeks raw is going to be number one, maybe not this week because of home run derby, but it's going to be number one until football season. And after, you know, football season, it'll be behind football. And, that happens every year. They ain't beating football. So, so they're, but no. the point is, it's a very, they're, they're, it's very, it's very valuable. Wrestling is not going down or anything like that. Um, wrestling's in a in a good. WWE is in a great place. AEW is in a you know, it's hard to say place, but it's certainly a good place. I mean, I you know, I mean, they're you know the 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 WBD. Um, you know, I mean, as far as cutbacks go, I mean, that's that's honestly, that's like that's probably even a bigger story than Vince. That's probably the biggest story is that. But that's but we're not going to get that story for another, you know, year and a half. Yeah. So so or a year. So, you know, right now, everything's everything's fine. Nothing's no one's getting canceled. Numbers are good. You know, they could be better. They certainly could be worse. Most of TV, almost all of TV is worse. Oh, I, I agree with you. Now, the other part of this Vince McMahon story, I I, I totally forgot to bring up was that the um, the special, the the Netflix uh, docu series, I guess whatever whatever they were putting together is now on hold, according to Denise Denise Salcedo with that breaking story. Yes, so that's the one where where, where when people go like all this stuff has gone on and they haven't been hurt. Well, that's a multi million dollar project. Dave, so we yes, got to go to break. Been hurt. We got to go to break, but I appreciate you coming on always. Okay, cool. We'll Ray, talk, soon. talk to you soon. Wrestling Observer Live, everybody. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarin here. Sunday edition. Thanks to Dave Meltzer for coming on. Always a pleasure to have him on. The OG. The original Dave Meltzer. Guys, I want to take a minute and talk about something that's happening at the end of the month, and it's Ric Flair's last match in Nashville. Ric Flair's last match.com has all the details. The, weekends gets, the weekend gets started with a roast of Ric Flair on Friday night, July 29th. The next day, you'll have panels with Brian Danielson, Claudio Castagnoli. You know, I was practicing that before, and I pronounced, I tried to do it perfectly with the accent. It came out terrible, so I'm not even attempting it this time. My producers yelled at me. The Horseman Reunion, Bret Hart Talks, SummerSlam 92. And on Sunday, they've got Paige, formerly known as Paige, McFoley, Kevin Nash, and so much more. It's all part of the biggest StarCast yet. StarCast 5. Photos, meet and greets, autographs, all happening. They've also got Black Label Pro and GCW on Friday. New Japan on Saturday and Ric Flair's last match on Sunday. Rick's last match will take place at the Nashville Municipal Auditorium and tickets are still on sale. Just 39 bucks at RickFlair'sLastMatch.com. They've got the NWA, MLW, AAA, Impact, New, New Japan, Ring of Honor, AEW, and a lot more involved in this. 
Some of the highlights, obviously, uh, you know, there's a lot of matches. Obviously, we don't know who Rick's facing. Rick's facing, we're going to find out tomorrow, actually, in episode two of the series over at rickflitterslastmatch.com. You can check it out over there. But there's a couple of matches on this card that I'm really looking forward to. One, obviously, Briscoes and Von Erichs. Very cool match, right? I'm into that. Killer Cross versus Harry Smith. First time I've never seen that. Ren Narita and Clark Connors, New Japan match. You got so much going on. Our good friend of the show, Josh Alexander and Jacob Fatu for the Impact Championship. Motor City Machine Guns and the Wolves. Briscoes, Von Erichs, Kerry and Ricky Morton versus Brian Pillman Jr. and Brock Anderson. A whole lot more. Get your tickets over at rickflairslastmatch.com. You could also watch. You could pre-order the event, obviously. You could watch on pay-per-view, on cable, satellite, or on fight at rickflairslastmatch.com. So let's talk about Ric Flair's last match. Because this is a big deal. I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of people initially when this happened, they were a little skeptical as to what condition Flair's going to be in. A lot of people questioning whether or not he should have this match. I think, you know, some of those are very valid questions still. You know, what condition is he in? You know, he kind of knows his body better than anybody else. Uh, There's a lot of people that have also been... uh, uh, there's a lot of people also that have been on top of this and following this, but I- I'm very curious on what you guys think. Do you think he should be having this match? Because, you know, to me, it's it's he thinks he's ready, you know, and it's wrestling. It's not boxing, and they could do something. They could gimmick it up. I think it, I think it's okay, you know, whatever. We'll see what happens here. Uh, very excited to talk about Ric Flair's last match.com. I want to give them a little plug here. Also, let's talk about this. We got a big SummerSlam card coming up. And, you know, it's, I said this on, on, on Matt Men, and I got a little bit of uh, a crap for it, but I want you guys to hear me out. On paper, this is a very good card. It's not a bad card at all. Pat McAfee has invigorated <laughs> the, the audience about this Happy Corbin match, which is generally, it, it's, it should be a nothing match, but people are very excited for this. Pat McAfee and Happy Corbin, uh, you also have a last man standing match. Now, obviously, everybody wants to see this match, right? We've never seen this, right? We've never seen Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns for the title. Uh, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, last man standing match for the WWE Universal Championship. United States champion Bobby Lashley defends against Austin Theory. Undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions. The Usos defend against the Street Profits with the latest development being that Jeff Jarrett has now been added to this match. Matt, our producer. I want to get your opinion. You think Jeff Jarrett adds more to this? Because the refs, right? The, the whole story is that the refs are totally incompetent in this company. The people that are supposed to do their job, totally incompetent. And they he's need big... they need Jeff Jarrett, right? <laughs> no, but I guess he's a big name. Uh, I That one surprised me when he came out. I was like, okay, I was not expecting that. Uh, the like Jeff Jarrett else, stuff. But... Yeah, but not Nashville makes sense. I was like, oh, that he lives there. That makes sense. Everybody knows him. Yeah, and I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's going to be some sort of schmoz with a guitar. I would totally. Oh, the guitar, the it. guitar, a concert, yeah. maybe. You know, <laughs> maybe you'll have a concert. Uh, so here's the other thing, right? Uh, what else sticks out for you on this card? Because you're a good gauge. You're, you are a hardcore wrestling fan. You watch everything. You watch AEW. You watch WWE. You do watch New Japan. You watch AAA. You watch indie stuff. You watch stardom. Is there any... It, does that does Lesnar, Roman do anything for you at this point? Lesnar and Roman, to me, feels like this needs to be... I mean, obviously, we don't know if it's going to be it. It should be. But it... if you're going to do a, if you're gonna do a uh, last man standing match, I feel like this needs to be a fun finale and i i, I mean a, a yeah. real finale um and i just don't see I, I don't see roman losing um i don't know how they're gonna do that make it make sense but we'll see um the other one on this card that really stands out that i'm interested in for many reasons is Liv morgan versus ronda rousey um is, is this because first of all because we're we're fans of Liv. she's a friend of the show right. for sure right but <laughs> uh, is it is it the right thing for her to beat ronda rousey right what does that do to I, when you know Becky what i think gonna her or somebody else beats her you know so what i think is going to happen is i think this is where ronda gets branched off in a program possibly the charlotte comes back and costs her um and then you got a non-title program between those two and i think if you're going to do that that program, which is another one that was getting long in the tooth, at least it's not for the title. Um, and then that you can do that in the fall. And then 
live and go on to something else and kind of establish yourself as a champion. That's what I would do. But yeah, that one that one intrigues me a little bit. How they're going to pull yeah. that off? Uh, I, mm. Listen, there's a lot of stuff on this card that that people are excited. You know what? I, what I want to okay, not bias or anything, right? But like for me, the hardcore fan, I'm excited about this Ring of Honor show that's coming up, Death Before Dishonor. Oh, yes. Right? This this is next week. Uh. And I got to tell you, man, this card looks pretty good. Jonathan Gresham will defend the Ring of Honor Championship, World Heavyweight Championship against Claudio Castagnoli at Death Before Dishonor. Claudio's never had a world title. So this is a great moment to, you know, if you're rebranding, if you're, if you're restarting Ring of Honor anytime soon, which I'm, listen, there's nothing that has told me that this is happening, but I would expect some sort of announcement for the television, right? I would expect some sort of uh, announcement as far as shows go because it's time now. You, you've had you've had a lot of months to prep it. Now it's the time if you're going to continue doing this. This can't just be a title that randomly gets defended on, on random AEW shows. I, I don't think that's the answer here. But Jonathan Gresham defends against the Ring of Honor, the, defends uh, the Ring of Honor World Championship against Claudio. Fantastic match. Briscoe's FTR, two out of three pinfall match. It, fantastic match. Uh, I mean, how do you? What do you think here? Uh, you think they're gonna they should announce something? Uh, yeah. Um, I I would I would expect them to to be honest with you. Um, they they usually do that on those pay per views. Uh, yeah, you know, they announce something, so I it makes sense to me. Some other mm. AEW and Ring of Honor news here. Parker Boudreau, 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 Bordeaux. There Boudreau. you go. There you go. You know, I, I thought I thought you spelled it wrong, but you were absolutely right here. It was me. Uh, he debuted on AEW Dark, and also uh, Troy Two Dimes Donovan debuted as well. So, uh, okay, you know, Parker's a big guy. Uh, early on, when this guy got signed to WWE, there were the that was that crazy flexing photo that he had, and there was so much uh, comparison to Brock Lesnar. Right, tons of comparison to Brock Lesnar, but what did they do? They 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 made him into nails. They <laughs> shaved his head and they put a jumpsuit on him, covering up his body. This guy was a body guy. They covered up his body and they shaved his head and they made him look ridiculous. So I'm curious if AEW could do something with him or or if he's going to sign a contract because you know, young guy, big dude. I I think that's that's the way to go. You think he would do well there? Yeah, I think I think he's I think ROH is a place to put him. I think that's where he ends up. I think that's in not the a bad ROH kind of. Yeah, that's not a bad bet at all. I think that would be a good. But they they introduced a new faction with him in. I didn't uh, parse the story that much, but yeah, it's a new faction that they're trying out on Dark, um, which they've been doing lately, and some of the doing some pretty good stuff with that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm curious to see how he does, and I'm curious to see this match and how he looked. Lineup for Dynamite Wednesday. This is Fighter Fest Night 2. Here we go. My favorite match. Eddie Kingston, Chris Jericho. Barbed wire everywhere match? Barbed wire death match? The flyer says death match? The promotion said everywhere match? I don't know if that was a TV friendly thing. They didn't want to say death match on TV. But Eddie Kingston I, and Chris Jericho are in a barbed wire match on Dynamite on Wednesday. Uh, this is going to be a ridiculous, insane match. Uh, we've seen what these two could do. Chris Jericho is now the king of hardcore. He's turning into Terry Funk in his old age. He's having fluorescent tube matches and he's getting pizza cutters on his head. And now he's doing a barbed wire death match with Eddie Kingston. Luchasaurus and Christian versus the Varsity Blondes. Brody King and Darby Allen. John Moxley, Wheeler Yuta, and the best friends. Uh, you know, I, I let, let's talk about AEW for a couple of minutes. We have like two minutes here before we go on break. But this has been a, a interesting time for them. Uh, a lot of attention on their ratings, a lot of attention on their TV deal that's coming up. You know, I think they've been doing really good in their ratings. Uh, I think we have to realize where we're at right now with TV. Uh, like Dave said in that second segment, I, I don't think any of these companies are going to have 4 million people watching anytime soon. But, you know, sitting at that million mark for AEW, that is a big number. And you also have to look at how they perform at for the night for their demos. So uh, I, I think this is a very interesting period, and they're trying different things. You know, having a barbed wire match, a, a barbed wire death match on AEW, they'll hit a million viewers here. They they hit them over a million for the uh, for the blood and guts match. We've seen them do this time and time again. So I'm curious if this builds up the momentum for them because 
uh, you know, sitting at that million mark is a great is a great number for them. Absolutely. Also, G1 results. I'm going to I'm going to go through some of this really quickly. G1 G, G1 results night 1 and 2. Okada Okada defeated Jeff Cobbs, Jay White defeated Sonata, Will Ospreay defeated El Fant- Fantasmo and Aaron uh, Hanari defeated Hiroshi Tanahashi. Interesting. <laughs> that was very interesting to me. You weren't shocked by that? Uh, not really, because I usually have one upset for, okay. for everyone. The only difference is this year, it's six matches, so the, the standings six are going to be a little tighter. Yeah. Um, Deuce Robinson defeated everyone. Shingo. Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Kenta. Toriano defeated Jonah by countout. And Taishi defeated Ishii. So uh, they're getting this card ready. You know, this is a very strange G1. A lot of people expected things would be totally wide open for this G1. We'd be back to how it was. But Japan has not done that yet. And uh, we're still in this weird pandemic era for New Japan where you're kind of limited as far as fan engagement goes. But uh, I saw some of these matches. I haven't seen all of them yet. Obviously, a lot going on. But I have to tell you, you know, some of these guys look very impressive. Night one, they they work great. Night two, they work great. It's New Japan. The work rate is always fantastic. It's just a matter of how it finishes and what they do here. But things are kind of gearing back into place. Especially with New Japan. Very interested in this. I, I I hope I hope this is the end. Like after they say like, well, limited attendance in September when they come back and they're doing, you know, cl- you could cheer now with limited attendance. I, I'm hoping that next year, you know, at least for that Tokyo Dome show, man, it, it, they can't do a limited show this year. They got to go with this with the Dome show. They got to go back to how it was. I think it's time for them. Very much so. Wrestling Observer Live, everybody. Andrew Zarian here. We're going to break. Hey, follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. Forgot to tell you guys. We'll be right back after this here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here. Final segment here on the show. Boy, that was a that was a jam-packed show here today. But... <laughs> There's a lot going on this week in pro wrestling. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna. I'm excited to see what happens on Raw if they even mention this TV 14 fiasco. And I'm also curious when. I'm sure I'm gonna find out probably this week when when this starts, because that's a big story here. When 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 are they gonna be doing this? We'll find out. No worries about that. Guys, uh, this was a lot of fun. I want to remind everybody, you can subscribe to us. We're everywhere podcasts are available now. Wrestling Observer Live is available in Spotify, in the po- uh, Apple Podcast Store. I think Google Music, it has it. We're, we're everywhere podcasts are available right now. So you can subscribe to this show and everything else that we're doing here that's available. I believe Denise's show is available. We're Live Pals available. Matt Men is available. Wrestling Observer Live, obviously, is available. You can follow us on social media as well. But, you know, the next couple of weeks, man, things are heating up. We're going into the fall slowly. I can't believe it. It's July, mid-July. We're talking about the fall already. We're talking about all out. Tickets went on sale. I'm not sure if I'm going to be there. I know Dave and Brian are going to be there. They're going to be doing a panel. I know everybody's going to be going this year. I don't know if I'm going to make it for my because of my hip issues. But, you know, I think that show is going to be a very big show. It's going to set the tone for the next couple of months for AEW. Then they go to Arthur Ashe, my backyard here in Queens, a couple of weeks later. And then everybody's going to be talking about their TV deal coming up in 2024, 2023. They got to renew it, right? You, this is when you renew. I mean, 2023, you got to renew for 2024. Very interesting stuff here. Very, very interesting stuff. Guys, that's it for this week. I'll be back next Sunday. Brian will be back tomorrow here on Wrestling Observer Live. Follow us on social media. You can follow me at Andrew Zarin. We'll be back next time. Take care.